Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining the post-game press conference for Vanderbilt. We are joined now by Kumar Rocker. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function and we will get to as many as possible. Let's go ahead and get started with questions. The first one is for Kayla. Kayla, go ahead. Hey, Kumar, uh, Kayla Anderson, News 2 here in Nashville. Um, just how tough was it today to, to exit the, the way that you did, knowing that you're the ultimate competitor? And just um, can you kind of put together what your, your time has been like here in Nashville? Yes, I, I wouldn't say it was tough at all. I say it just sets it up for the future. And uh, personally left it all out there. And uh, before the season started, I said to myself that I want these young guys to experience exactly what I experienced. And I uh, came a game short of that, but that's part of it. We'll go next to Steve. Steve, please go ahead. Good morning, Steve Lehman, New Channel 5 in Nashville. Just how difficult, you said the other day that they don't like to strike out. Just how difficult is it against a lineup like that where you almost have to be perfect with pitches and defensively in the field? Right. I mean, that's what made them natty champs. I mean, it's a good hitting lineup, and they earned it. Again, if you have questions, please use the raise hand function. We'll go next to Aria. Aria, go ahead. You mentioned, you know, trying to give some of the younger players the experience that you had, but even though uh, you ultimately didn't win the championship, how valuable do you think that kind of experience is for a young player to be able to make it all the way to the championship series? I think it's huge for him. I think it sets him up for the future, like I said, just makes him hungrier. We'll go next to Chris. Chris, please go ahead. Chris Harris at WSMV in Nashville. Kumar, congratulations on a great career. What? Uh, how would you sum up your time at Vanderbilt, your career? Uh, biggest growth period of my life so far. And I dedicate all that to Coach Corbin and the Vanderbilt family. We'll go what next. Will you remember, sorry, what will you remember most about it? Uh, showing up to the locker room every day and just hanging out. All right, let's go next to Chad. Chad, please go ahead. Hey, Kamar, if, if you could go back and tell that kid who pitched an inning against uh, TCU a couple years ago, uh, if you could talk to that kid now, what would you say to him? Uh, it's emotional. Uh, he's came a long way. And I'd like to thank everyone around them for how far he's came. All right, we'll wait one final second. Are there any additional questions tonight? All right, it looks like that's it. Kumar, thank you so much for your time tonight. We greatly appreciate it. We'll be joined shortly by Coach Tim Corbin. If you have a question for Coach, please go ahead and use the raise hand function and we'll get to as many as possible. Thank you. We are now joined by head coach, Tim Corbin. Coach, thank you so much for your time tonight. If you can give us a brief opening statement, then we'll go to questions from the media. Well, I mean, I think it's a, a time right now to thank the NCAA and the people of Omaha for hosting the tournament. Um, when none of us took this for granted, none of us knew that we could potentially get people in here to watch these kids. It was such a celebration of baseball um, here in June, something we really needed, it's something the city needed. And I, I commend the NCAA and Omaha for being able to pull this off in the manner that they did and keeping everyone healthy and, and safe. Um, the other thing is uh, congratulations to Chris, uh, Jake, Cheese, Scotty, um, John Cohen, their athletic director, Mississippi State, their players, uh, their fan base for, for winning this thing. Um, they're very good and very deserving. That's a, that's a very tough team in so many different ways. We knew that when they came to Nashville, but you could, uh, you could see who they were once the tournament started to, to finish. Um, great comeback for them in so many ways. I think they, they realized that they were never out of this thing even after we beat them in the first game. Uh, they pitched so well, Bednar was outstanding. Uh, Sims is next level reliever. 
Uh, the players are tough. They're really tough. They do such a nice job of playing offense and playing defense. Uh, it's a very good team. And, and we, we send our congratulations over to them and uh, everyone from Mississippi State. Thank you very much, Coach. We'll now open it up to the media. Our first question is from Robbie. Robbie, please go ahead. Uh, hey, Tim, what are you going to remember the most from coaching Kamar? I can't say right now. I mean, he's uh, he he's just a one in a million kid. He his fibers are so real and so pure. Um, he just loves team. He just he's connected to competition. He's connected to his teammates in such a way that. Uh, He's just the ultimate college pitcher, ultimate college teammate, ultimate college baseball player. He'll go down as one of the best we've ever had at Vanderbilt. Uh, I don't like to categorize the kids because I don't want to slight anyone, but my gosh, uh, this kid is, he's meant so much to our program. He's meant a lot to college baseball. He's meant a lot to the SEC. Uh, he's the best reflection of his parents. That's. It's high praise. He's just done everything right. Um, I love that young man. Thank you, Coach. Let's go next to you, Chris. Chris, please go ahead. Tim, this was always going to be a, a tough season. You broke in a new lineup. You didn't have last year. You had stops and starts, I'm sure, with training. You had COVID things. Um, is, is this a team that just – Maybe got tired at the end, you, you know, a longer season than they're used to playing and just all the things coming in with the inexperience. I, I don't want to make excuses for you, but mm -hmm. that had to be tough on a team not being used to this grind that they faced, um, having never done it before. Yeah, I would say you're right, Chris. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, you don't ever want to say something that would take away from Mississippi State because they were the better team. Uh, but that being said, I think from uh, we lost a lot of emotional energy and physical and mental energy towards the end. You could feel it. Our bats didn't have the same uh, speed in them, uh, same strength. Uh, we played hard. We were we were gritty, but that that's probably what got us to this point. To be honest with you, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you, you, you don't have to be perfect in this thing to win it. We, we did that in 2014. But you, you, have, to, you have to have the timely hits. Uh, you have to have big hits. You have to have pitching when it counts. And you have to make plays. And, and we just didn't do that. I mean, that's no slide on the kids. We just, we just didn't play our best baseball towards the end. Um, they're trying. Um, but I would say this was a, a real difficult uh, getting through the regional was emotional. Getting through the super regional was emotional. And then as we got through this, we had to navigate certain situations. And I think it caught up with us. And then the groundswell of momentum over on the other side, you could feel it. And that's real. It is real, especially at this level. Um, but I, it caught up with us. Next question goes to Aria. Aria, please go ahead. You know, you've talked throughout the season about the, this lack of experience that they have, but how do you think that such a young team making it this far uh, could, you know, be a vital, you know, experience going forward and into the future? Yeah, it certainly helps everyone. I mean, to, to come here, number one, helps you. It helps your confidence. To come here and get in a game helps you. And certainly playing as long as we did. I mean, we played a lot of baseball games out here. We played a lot of tough baseball games out here. We don't always play well, but we played tough baseball. And that, that certainly is going to help the kids moving forward. I think the thing that you identify with once you get out at this level is 
if you're a younger kid, the execution of really good pitching, the execution of really good hitting. And you can take Mississippi State's numbers and you can look at their batting average, but that tells nothing. And sometimes numbers don't tell the story and they certainly don't with that team because that team challenge you, challenges you on every single pitch. And really with some of them, and my mind moves to Hancock right away, with, it's almost like the at-bat starts when he gets to two strikes, and then he's tough to put away. I mean, his plus-minus numbers are incredible. That's 44 walks and 16 strikeouts. That's insane. And Rowdy and Tanner and uh, Tanner behind the plate, I mean, it's a lot of tough outs, and I don't want to leave anyone out. I mean, Kellum's going to be a good player. He's a freshman. They're, they're just really tough, really tough. Kayla, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, every year is a different team um, with different players. Sometimes you have the same players coming back. But what did you learn from this team this season um, that's, that's different? Well, we... I think the the fact that it was a team. I mean, I mean, I think when you start putting teams together, you you look at teams that get to this point, and you start you know you start analyzing pitching and fielding and and and, and hitting. But the reality is, it's a lot of small things done well along the way, and it starts all the way back to August. It was navigating the year, as someone mentioned. It's socially keeping it together. It's so many of the conversations that take place away from the field and then creating harmony inside the locker room. And it's just simple things that matter to get your team there. And kids have to step away. And I mean, for lack of a better way, they have to share their toys. They, they really do. If you want to be good at something, you have to share what you do with other people. And you have to completely remove the individual or the individual needs, understanding that the individual needs will be taken care of if you throw yourself into the group efforts. And then it's something as small as taking out the trash, not looking for credit for it, and just doing it because you know it needs to be done. Now, it's a small example, but that's really the interworkings of a team. And when you can do those things, and you can do those things on a daily level, then you've got a chance to tap into your skill sets on the baseball field. But the reality is you can't tap into your skill sets on the baseball field if those things aren't brought together. We'll do a few more questions. Next one to Joe. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, Tim, kind of following up on Aria's question, but specifically with, uh, with Little and Riley, you know, what, what do you think you, you have in those two pitchers moving forward, and what do you think this experience will do for them? Will, I'm sorry. I, I, little, little and Riley. Oh, yeah, well, I, I think th there's a number, a number of them, Joe. I mean, Christian and, and Riles are young kids. Um, they, get to, they got on the mound. Um, I think they probably learned a lot and learned a lot about Pitching, pitching, and calming, calming yourself in order to do so, execution. Um, they're certainly going to learn a lot about endurance, too, because it has a lot to do with being able to execute. But there's so much that goes into it, and this physical and mental training. And it's a, it's a unique young man that, that can come into this situation as a first-year guy and have any type of... Uh, success what Kumar did his freshman year you don't do that people don't do that he, he's the 0.5 percent that that does that doesn't happen um so th those kids have a lot of learning to do but we've got a bunch of kids on that team that that do and will be better with time Steve go ahead Tim, congratulations on another great season. As you Thank mentioned you. earlier, you, you had a 2014 team that was basically perfect in the postseason. You've had some other incredible teams that didn't make it this far. I'm not asking you to compare this team to any of those, but how will you remember this team and the journey they took you on over the last several months? Yeah, it was incredible. It really was. I mean, it was so peaceful. Um, they just created 
such a, a nice harmony. Uh, I, I think when I, when I think of them, I think of Jason Gonzalez, I think of Cooper Davis, I think of Hugh Fisher. Those are three seniors that didn't play all the time, but they, they created such great communication within the walls. Um, no trouble. They sent the staff home every night not worrying about them. You know how valuable that is. Uh, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen if they do something socially. Um, I, I, just, I just feel they gave themselves such a great chance because they just created great consistency in, in every area. And, uh, you know, it, it, you, get, you get to this point, I'm sure there's a lot of teams out there saying, well, we were better than Vanderbilt. They, you know, they may have been, but, you know, it's, there's some fortune and it's doing things right, as I said. And if you can do that, you, you might put yourself in a position. You've got to have some horses, too. I'm not naive. I know those two guys and Murph and McIlvain and Maldonado and our bullpen was very good. And I think in a lot of ways they, they, they really helped us. Um, uh, but the, no, this, this was an incredible group. I mean, they made it so much fun. I'm, I'm going to be really sorry to break it up. It's, it's unfortunate. Corey, please go ahead with the next question. Yeah, sorry, Coach. It's, it's along those lines, but you talked about the journey of this team. Mm -hmm. Is what you remember about this team grinding it out and making it within one win of taking it all, or, or is the heartbreak of being so close too much to get past? No, I, I'll get through that. I, I don't. I just don't think you can measure teams based on a gold trophy that's a half an inch bigger than the other one. It, it's and even if you don't get that trophy, I mean, hell, this, this is so tough. To win in a national championship is insane. You, you you can't do it. It's just so difficult to do. So the fact that we've been around this this place and and gotten that opportunity, great, but. No, I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm at peace with this group. I know it's disappointing for all of them. It is. It's disappointing for the staff. It's disappointing for me, but no, I'm, I'm at peace with, with what happened. I, I mean, I am. I would have loved to win. But, I, I, you know, I think 10, 15 years ago, I may have felt completely different. But you know what? When every kid gives everything they've got and it, it's, it's centered around the group, you had no problem with, with what happens. Outcomes are outcomes. They happen. We didn't play our best down the stretch here. I get it. But that doesn't take away anything from what the, what the group was all about. Our final question tonight will come from Chris. Chris, please go ahead. Hey, Tim, I know Carter had a dislocated shoulder, uh, what, six weeks ago now. That was awfully tough to play through. That would have probably knocked a lot of guys out for the rest of the year. Talk about the effort he made to come back, how it affected him. Uh, and, you know, was he playing anywhere near 100%? And is that something that he'll get treatment on after the year, if you can comment on that? Yeah, it'll get treatment after the year. Um, I'm glad you brought that up, Chris, because that kid's tough as nails. He doesn't say boo. And he was hurting. I mean, he's on a 1 to 10 scale. He's probably a 5 or a 6. You know, he's not himself, but he also understands that that's part of playing sports. You're not going to be, especially this time of year, you might be 60% of yourself, but it it still doesn't mean that you can't compete at a high level. Uh, he always competes, that kid. He's, he's a hell of a kid. He's been raised well. His parents are super people. They're so supportive, but yeah, he's He's dinged up. There's Bradfield's dinged up. Carter's dinged up. But it's part of playing a college season. You know, you get near 70 games, and you put everything into this for 11 months. We, you know, Colwick wasn't himself at the end from a hand standpoint. He was doing the best he could. But uh, that that's part of it. I'm sure over on the other side, same way. And I, that, those certainly are not excuses. It's just the grind of a season, though. It, it kind of wears on you. Coach, thank you again for your time tonight and throughout the entire series. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, too. And I want to thank all the people back in, in Nashville, too, the Nashville media, everyone. I don't want to leave anyone out. I, I appreciate you guys following us and taking care of our kids. It's, 
it's very meaningful to me. It's very meaningful to the university. So thank you. And, and congratulations to Mississippi State again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Coach. And thank you all for the media for joining us tonight for this press conference. You will find a copy of this in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. You will also find transcripts available at ncaa.com backslash transcripts. Thank you all for joining us tonight.